Hey guys, Mr. Chicken Movies here, welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be talking about Inception, a film that a lot of people talk about as a modern classic, and what do I think of it? Well, let's get into the review itself. Inception was written and directed by Christopher Nolan, and it stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Ken Watanabe, Tom Hardy, Elliot Page, Killian Murphy, Tom Beringer, and Marion Cotillard. I'd like to apologise for any names that I butchered there, the only name that I decided not to announce is the name of the cinematographer. And the main concept of this film, if you like, is the idea of manipulating dreams, and how interesting that can actually be. For starters, in terms of a lot of these big sequences, this film has some really unique ways of covering these dreams, whether it's manipulating time, or sound, or gravity, or memories, or perception. It's all really interesting stuff, and Christopher Nolan is able to use a lot of these interesting concepts and applications of it in really fascinating ways that aid the story. Because of that, we're able to get some really, really impressive sequences in this film. Now, of course, I'm not a huge fan of some of the, you know, real-world stuff, but rest be sure, once we get into these big dream things, it just looks phenomenal. You can tell that Christopher Nolan had a really good idea, really unique vision for what he wanted to do with a lot of these big action sequences and how he plays around with some of the ideas there. You can also tell that he has a lot of good ideas in terms of what applications of them to use. You know, you have the hotel dream, you have the snow dream, you have the weird buildings folding on top of each other dream, you have the rain dream. All of these different things lend to different types of action and different obstacles for our characters to overcome. It leads to us just being more interested in each of these situations because we really don't know what the characters are going to come across next. Without a doubt, a lot of the visuals are by far the most impressive things here. For starters, the cinematography done by... I'm not saying his name. The cinematography is really good though, we're able to frame a lot of these fantastical types of visuals on top of each other here, and it just makes the film all the more impressive. The real star of the show in this, of course, is Christopher Nolan, this was all pretty much his idea, and he's able to tie it all together incredibly well, he's able to come up with some great ideas, managing all of those concepts together to a point where this just feels like a complete package. It's clearly Nolan's vision and he's telling it his own way. Although assisting a lot of these huge elements and big exciting sequences going on here, we have some really good action choreography going on here, we have some incredible visual effects going on here, I mean, you can kind of just see, I don't think I really need to explain it, but there's also a huge amount of practical stuff that's going on, some practical sets, some practical stunt work, which makes these things look great. In particular, the rotating hallway sequence, which I really see as an impressive stunt. Uh, and of course, the production design is excellent as well. The editing by Lee Smith often gets overlooked, but we're able to frame everything properly in our scenes, and he's able to loop a lot of the story elements together very well. In particular, when you have, let's say, three or four dream sequences going on at the same time, he's able to time them and show them all in the correct intervals properly. As well as that, the sound mixing, the sound editing, that's also superbly done. Shock Twist, the Christopher Nolan film, is pretty much perfect in terms of its technical attributes. The main problems, of course, come from explaining all of our fantastical visuals, because when it comes to actually explaining, you know, all of these big dream things and all of the rules that work inside of it, you obviously have to slow the film down to a halt, and during these sequences there really isn't much tension. Sometimes things are placed in there specifically to try and inject a sense of urgency when realistically the film doesn't need that. I think there are better ways that you can tell some of these plot elements and some of the ways you can explain these concepts in ways that are interwoven with the story a little bit better. Because ultimately what you're waiting for is the final hour of this film where we get into our proper heist that's inside Killian Murphy's dreams and that is all really well done. It's just the build up there that's the struggle. Often, characters will resort to kind of just explaining and talking about everything going on in the film, and I'm not really there for that, you know. I do appreciate, in terms of the dialogue, that what they are doing is they are doing a lot of show and don't tell, and they don't massively rely on spelling everything out to you. 
I do appreciate that this is a film that doesn't try and treat its audiences like morons, and I think the fact that this film had success shows that you can be a relatively smart movie without having to spell everything out for your audience. I do really appreciate that about the script, but there is a heavy amount of exposition and certain characters are just relegated to explaining things. I should probably add that all of the things they explain are things that need to be explained, and they use Ariadne's character as a real sort of everyman to sort of project the audience onto, and I've got no problems with that. All of the information that's communicated to us is necessary and it all is logical. There's never anything that's randomly sprung upon us, and I'm pretty sure all of the setup has some level of payoff associated with it. Despite all the ranting about exposition I just did, honestly the pacing doesn't reflect this at all because we're always learning something, we're always getting some cool visual or discovering something about one of our characters, so there isn't really any big dud or dull moment in the story. It always follows this good pace and then it rapidly accelerates once we get into this dream heist. I can't emphasize how good the dream heist that occurs roughly halfway into the film is. Although let's face it, a lot of the great pace that we feel in this film is due to Hans Zimmer's amazing score for this. This is probably top five Hans Zimmer scores of all time. Anything relating to sound in this is just so good. Even the sound mixing, which is usually a problem I have with Christopher Nolan films, didn't actually bother me at all while watching this. I think it says a lot about the score of the film that temp music and inspiration for 90% of modern day scores that we see now are based on Inception. The acting all around is really good in this film, the highlights being Leonardo DiCaprio and Mario Cotillard, I feel like their dynamic was really interesting and all of the grief I think is done really well by Leo DiCaprio. As a whole the characters they vary quite a bit, so obviously we have Cobb, and he is by far the most interesting character, he has the most riding on this, and I was fully invested in his story. Uh, I also really enjoyed Elliot Page in this film as Ariadne, she was good. Tom Hardy as Eames was an effortlessly likeable personality, and while I could admit he was kind of thin in terms of character, he was just fun because of the presence alone. Ken Watanabe was really good in this, but it didn't really feel like he was given a huge amount to do, he was quite thin as a character, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt was probably the weak link in this film as Arthur, he just didn't really have anything to his character other than explaining what was going on. Yusuf was the other weak link, I really didn't care about anything that was going on, he was really lacking in terms of personality, but when you're dealing with an ensemble cast this big, the fact that I could connect to at least three or four characters here was good enough for me, in all honesty. And lastly we have Killian Murphy, who's quite underrated in this film, I think he does a really good job uh, portraying the father-son dynamic, the sort of callous businessman ideas in it. He's really good in the film, and I think the fact that he's a wild card adds uh, to the kind of intensity level going on in this film, given so much of it actually hinges on the decision he makes. I'm not saying that all of the characters in this film are A-plus strong characters in this, but for a kind of action thriller with this much that needs to be explained, the fact that I care about enough of these characters is good enough where I'm from, we understand what all of them are about, and there are clear stakes involved in this that are established and used. In particular, the main, I guess, character arc that Leonardo DiCaprio goes on with having to basically come to terms with what happened to his wife, I thought, was a clear emotional strength of this film, and the way they explore it and explain it, I thought made for some pretty good drama. A lot of this film is ethically grey, and they explore the ideas of well, ideas, the way that dreams can influence them, and a lot of the shady manipulation stuff that goes on this film I feel like is pretty well explored. You can definitely question the morality of certain characters, however, ultimately, you can justify everything that those characters do. The various characters in this film come into conflict with each other a lot, which I actually really appreciate. It adds this extra layer of personality and depth to this film, it would be so easy to make this film very bland in terms of our actual investment in the characters going through it, but the fact that it has this much depth is really special for a film of this size with such a complicated concept. If you take away all of the dreams and conceptual stuff that plays around with time and so on, what you have is a film about a man dealing with grief who's on the run because of that, 
and you have all this stuff in terms of extortion and playing around with ideas going on. But simply, this film is deeper than it needed to be, and for that, it deserves a lot of credit. A lot of which needs to go to Christopher Nolan. How many directors out there could make a film this ambitious conceptually, in such a large scale with this much depth and character, and do it successfully? This film was a giant risk and Christopher Nolan pulled it off, so credit where it's due because he has made a modern day classic. A film that I hope a lot of people check out if you haven't seen it already. Please just do me a favour and watch it, and like I said, it's a modern day classic. I think a lot of people will remember the visuals of this film, the concepts that appear in this film, some of the bits of dialogue, because overall, it's just a great film. You've got some good character arcs, some good character themes that are explored relatively well. You have these incredible action sequences that look brilliant. You've got some witty dialogue, albeit sometimes the dialogue isn't always great and it is quite exposition heavy, but in terms of creativity and storytelling, this film succeeds at what it wants to do. And for that, this film's great, and I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. I guess you could say this was Christopher Nolan's dream. But regardless of that, be sure to check this movie out if you haven't seen it already. And let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts on Inception are. Was I too nice? Was I too critical? Let me know. Because unfortunately, this is the end of the video. I felt like making this review because films like this really aren't made that often anymore. How often do we see these big budget exciting films do well that aren't linked to some sort of pre-existing franchise? If you haven't seen this film already, what are you doing? I really hope that I can bring more eyes to a film like this and I hope that more like Inception get made. I enjoy Hollywood taking risks. And I enjoy Inception. So be sure to check out my Twitter, at MrChicken4321. And with that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.